Welcome back to our channel, YouTube. My name is Kristen Forgione. I'm the founder, creative director, and principal designer of The Lifestyle Co. And my name is RJ, and this is our modern mission reno project. It's a renovation, you guys. You ask us all the time for more renovations, and they take just as long <laughs> as building yeah. a house. They really do. A lot more brain power, I feel like. Yeah, and um, renovations are hard to show on YouTube, right? Because we have to have you kind of all along the way. And on this project, we didn't get to do that. But we do have some killer before and afters of this one. And RJ and I are going to try to kind of explain to you if yeah. we even can what this project looked like before because it's insanely different yeah and you you won't you won't really believe it so we're gonna hook you early and we're gonna show you the before of this kitchen can you even believe that that is the same kitchen and you guys we did this we started demo on this project may mm -hmm. of 2022 it's March of 2023. That's pretty good. That is Fast. not bad. No. The contractor on this project is Modern Splendor Homes, also here out of Arizona. Um, this project is located in Gilbert, which is a suburb of Phoenix. We don't do a ton of projects. I mean, that's where my house is. And I guess there's there's been several. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but so Phoenix is huge, as you know, I'm sure. Um, but so this is a suburb of, and the lot is beautiful. The home is beautiful, our clients saw the vision early, yeah, which amazing. we were really impressed with. Yeah, so they had already purchased the property. We didn't even consult on the, on the possibilities of a renovation. They purchased the property. We obviously came in and were like, wow, this is a huge project. Um, they really love Spanish Revival. It's called Modern Mission Reno because they love mission style properties. Um, it is a Santa, it's really a Tuscan. It was built in the early 2000s. So the house is actually a Tuscan, which I know so many of you are probably like, oh my God, that's me. That's what my house looks like. Yeah. There were columns everywhere. There were crazy ceiling yeah. lines. Like not a straight room in the house. Nowhere. No. So much voided space, like very interesting layout. And we're gonna try to show you the old layout and the new layout. So how long did we spend drawing this floor plan? We probably spent a couple hours just like looking at it overhead, talking about all the possibilities. This was the hardest space, I think, the kitchen, because yeah. this wall was angled, the island was angled, there was a million different ceiling heights, there was like a big overhead. The garage door was yeah. behind us. So you used to see through like through the kitchen right to the garage door, yeah. which is not our first choice, right? We always kind of want to conceal that a little bit. Mm -hmm. There was a mud room that was like kind of tucked back. Yeah. The laundry room and the mud room were completely separate. There was like three or four pantries. Yeah. So there were, there was so much pantry space. Um, we spent, I'd say at least, we like to call them like jam sessions, yeah. at least two to three. I was gonna say, yeah. Typically on a project of this size, we would require the use of an architect just because like we're good, but we're not that good. <laughs> um, you don't want to be responsible for the house falls Yeah, out. And, and a designer is not a sub for an architect and an architect is not a sub for a designer or a draftsman. Like you need everyone involved. But um, since we had plans originally and the changes structurally were pretty minimal, mm -hmm. but so impactful, we were basically able to draw it and then we sent it to one of our architecture partners and they were able to verify it, field verify it structurally, make sure it was sound, stamp it, and then we're good to go. So um, we drew this thing yeah. and we were proud of ourselves. I'm very proud. <laughs> yeah. It, it was hard. There's a, there's a different element as a designer when you're actually responsible for the floor plan because yeah. we, we don't do that normally. That's normally the architect. So, um, and the house just flows and functions so well. So like I said, we're gonna try to show you as much of the before so you can get a feel of, of what it looked like. Um, but tell me about this kitchen and kind of what yeah. were some of our clients wishes in this space? What was most important to them? So they really wanted to feel warm, Euro, like it's been around for a while. So we picked a lot of elements that are timeless, like mm -hmm. the wood cabinets. We went with a marble backsplash. The countertops are actually quartz just for durability, but they pair really nicely with that. This is a real marble backsplash. We wanted to get our moment there. The beautiful heavy veining. We did unlacquered black brass for the plumbing, which I'm so glad she was on board for because a lot of clients get a little scared of unlacquered brass because it will age and patina over time, but it just like makes it feel so Euro and ties everything together. The, these fixtures are from Devol and it's matching um, yep. T-bar in the faucet. These pendants are also from Devol. Devol is an incredible house out of London. Um, if we could get 
every single thing over here and just put it everywhere we would. So um, we have to be selective, obviously. It's a very high-end finish, but in certain uses, it's so incredibly gorgeous. So we use it in here and then we'll show you the bar. We used it in the bar as well, in the, the bar sink. Yeah, this was like one of her must-haves in the kitchen is a European French range. So this Italian. is okay, Italian, thank you. <laughs> Italian. So this is the graphic, graphic color, adds a little bit of contrast in the kitchen and the brass hardware mm -hmm. just. And we were a little insecure about the graphite at first. Yeah. Yeah. Just because anytime you hear graphite, charcoal, it can have a blue undertone. And we hadn't seen it in person. We had the swatch, but the swatch is that big. Um, and it just turned out so incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we, we love it. Tapered hood, which is very Santa Barbara, yeah. European feeling. Um, the kitchen isn't huge. So I hope that you guys can relate to this kitchen a little bit. I yeah. feel like we do a lot of like really humongous kitchens. Do you remember the dimensions of the island? Um, it's probably about like 108 by like 48, by right? Yeah, so it's it's yeah. not super mm -hmm. wide, which again is something that I think is a little bit more common. Um, if we go in here, can you see me still? This is the butler pantry, which you guys have come to know and love from our projects. We have a wall oven here. We did natural stone as a backsplash, placed a shelf, so super utility. There's a water dispenser in here, the LK, which you've seen from the ODL house and several other projects that we have. Um, there's an ice maker in here. This will ultimately be where they make their coffee in the morning. And it's just another space that allows them just a little bit of seclusion for some of the dirtier stuff, some of the more utility stuff. Like I said, this used to be the garage door. Like my, my mind is still blown. I still can't believe that this needs to be the garage door. So now we're on the other side of the kitchen and this space is now nice and open. It, wasn't before. No, there was like this big bulkhead that like made it feel really like and the ceilings cabinets. are tall. There yeah, cabinet. Yeah, yeah. It was like they wanted tall ceilings, but then they closed them yeah. off in like they a whole bunch of short. yeah. <laughs> and like no offense to the original architect or owners, the house is beautiful and lovely and was very well loved. That much we know. Um, and you could feel the bones were here. We just had to figure out how to open them up. So the sink actually used to be on this run and we did not touch this exterior wall. So what created the size of the island is this pinch point right here, as we call it. So we were a little concerned actually, because on paper it felt like it could have been small, but I think we nailed the island size and yep. we nailed the layout and now it's nice and open and there's such a beautiful sight line. Mm -hmm. And as you come this way, so this is the breakfast nook, which again, now it's nice and open. This bay window was like not getting a moment at all. No. And they had a rectangle dining table in here, but I feel like a circle just works so much better. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I agree. Um, there's also a basement in this home with a whole bunch of square footage down there, a theater, a gym, um, like a den, a pool bath. It's just not quite finished yet. Finished from a construction standpoint, but not from a furnishing standpoint. So maybe we'll have you back someday um, if we ever finish that space, but the clients are gonna take it from here down there. So you won't be able to see it, but that's where those stairs are leading. So then in here, how do we even, I mean, we're gonna show you the before. How do we even explain? Well, this room was so different. First of all, the fireplace was in the corner. Yeah. They, and so they had the whole footprint of the furniture kind of facing the fireplace. So it's really narrow and long. It didn't really make it, sense. TV was here. Uh -huh. Fireplace was in the corner. TV was here. There was a seven foot gather sign <laughs> right here. Bam! Right on the wall. Huge gather sign. Huge. Sweet thing. Yeah. Um, so that was the first thing we took down. <laughs> I think there was a couple different ceiling heights. So we just squared off the ceiling in here and added faux beams, which look amazing. They look like they've been here all along. I, I think that's something to note about this house is in a renovation, right? Or even in a new build. I feel like we talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. It's challenging to age materials. It's challenging to make it not look new. And I think on a renovation, it's even harder mm -hmm. because you have both old materials and new materials. Even when you touch every surface, there's still a meeting of something that's been here for quite some time and something that's brand new. Yeah. So in addition, a, mo a modern mission or Spanish revival project makes it even harder because we're trying to get that age in everything we do. So I think these beams, this is a hand-hewn, like rough sawn look, mm -hmm. which I think was perfect. Um, fireplace situation, talk to us about that. Okay, so we obviously moved the fireplace. We actually got a new fireplace box um, in here. And then we did this beautiful, this is out of concrete, oh, ribbed goodness. mantle. It's so beautiful. I'm obsessed with it. Mm -hmm. And this and the, like creamy color. The curvature here mm -hmm. is like, and what was this, an inch and a half? I think it was profile? an inch and a half profile. Mm -hmm. And then above that on the over mantle, we did Roman clay. And it's just a subtle change compared to the wall color, which is Benjamin Moore Chantilly Lace, shocker. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, and this just, and then we did arched built-ins on either side, wanted to bring in more warmth with the wood cabinets, and it just gives a styling moment as well. And on this wall, so we talk about this all the time, creating the front of a room. This, the front of this space, which this room had no front, it was so bizarre. It like, is the front the fireplace, is the front the, the TV, the sectional was pushed against the wall, is the front the gather sign, we don't know. So you have to create a front of a space. It's very obvious now, where is the front of the space? right here, right? And that's where the sectional is facing, all of the conversation can go around, but that still leaves us with this huge wall. So what, what do we do with a huge wall? Well, you can also look at how to tame your big ass wall, something big ass walls on the channel. Um, we just we just premiered it a couple weeks ago. It, does, it has done super well, lots of ideas there. Combining two of the ideas here with sconces, so focal lighting and oversized art. I am. I honestly think this wall turned out to be one of my favorites in the whole space. Yeah, and the client was actually worried about taking the focal away from the fireplace, but I don't think it does at all. I feel like it just adds to the space. Yeah, it makes and it I, feel so much more finished. Mm -hmm. And I love the like moody colors in it, which ties to like kind of the moody vibe of the rug and the coffee table. So I just tied together so well. And in case you're wondering, any furnishings that are available for purchase will be linked in the description from our shop. Um, we also talked to us in the comments. We truly aim, our entire team aims to be as helpful as we can. We don't put out YouTube content for you to just gatekeep and not tell you where anything's from or say custom, custom, custom. The sectional is custom. <laughs> So yeah. there will be some things because we're a professional design firm and we do some custom pieces, but if it's not custom, we try to allow you to either have the resource or to be able to buy it from us. So right off the relocated garage door, it used to be an, another pantry space and a smaller laundry room. We combined the spaces, created a mud drop and a larger laundry room. We played with a little bit darker tones in here. So on the perimeter is Sherwin-Williams taupe tone for the cabinets. The island is like a brown gray wash with integrated finger pull hardware, Bruno gold countertops throughout. And then the flooring is a porcelain tile that looks like bluestone. So we went with a little bit darker vibe in here. The original powder is a completely different vibe than what we went with now. One, there is this stained glass oval window. So we got rid of that. It was, I think there was like a blue wallpaper. Powder is a really great place to play with a moodier vibe. So that's what we did. The walls are painted in a dark brown Roman clay. It's from Portola Paints called Damascus. On the flooring we did, this is like a concrete star and cross tile from Ardo Tile. Brass hardware throughout, brass light fixtures, and again, they just are really soft lighting, so it gives the moody, moody vibe. Is this our favorite part of the whole house? It's my favorite part, I think. I, I mean, how can it not be? I know, I think it's my favorite part too, except if I had this level bar situation in my home, I would drink way too much. I agree. Our client did ask though, she loves to make craft cocktails. Yeah. Was it, Be I think it was Becky, she yeah, loved she, it. Yeah. yeah, and she wanted to feel like a restaurant bar. Yeah. So, so exactly, so we, we went for hospitality vibes in this corner of the space and we freaking nailed it. It looks so good. There are so many little moments that we're gonna try to point them out for you. Um, but yeah, this is this is 100% my favorite, favorite spot. So yeah. this, I'm trying to think of the before, this was a built-in dining hutch type of, right early 2000s looking thing. Yeah. I feel like we already had some space yeah. to work with, but then there was like a wall right here and the cabinets were actually like up here. So we pushed them back so they're in line with the range run. Um, and it just opens up this hallway a lot more. We yeah. were concerned about this too, like this pinch point. Um, you're not gonna be able to see, but behind you is this huge sliding door that opens up to the out to the exterior. There was an exterior door. So this exterior wall got a major facelift and like, look at all the light coming in. It's so light and bright. It was so dark before. I think we mentioned columns everywhere. Super weird ceiling here. There was like a triple tray yeah. situation in here. So we really did like, I feel like we spent so much time just like cleaning it up, cleaning it up, simplifying it. Um, so countertop here is black mist toned. It's granite. It's something that we absolutely love. It's such a cost effective material and it looks like a million bucks. It's definitely a sub for soapstone or bluestone. If you're looking for one of those and can't find it a lot more cost effective, a lot blacker than that. Um, doesn't have a lot of veining though. So if you're looking for a lot of movement, probably not going to be your best option, but we did a single OG edge on this. Do you remember the paint color on these? Accessible beige. Shocker, accessible beige, it's our fave. Um, flooring inlay. 
Yes, this was, I think this was your idea. Oh. I'm gonna give you the credit okay. for it, yes. <laughs> um, we did a black tile. It's, it's kind of hard to see, but it's actually on the toe kick of the cabinets. And then we also did a border around and they did such a good job. It's like perfectly flush with the wood flooring. So it's not a trip hazard, but just add such a cool detail to it. And you can see it from so many different angles. I think that's something else that I'm really proud of with the floor plan is in opening it up, the sight line is like, 300 feet, like it just looks so big. You could have so many people being entertained here. Um, we continue the countertop onto the backsplash. These are the additional Devol taps that we were talking about, both hot and cold. They're separate hot and cold, which we love. Um, I've already demonstrated this on like 15 YouTube videos, so I'm not gonna demo it for you, but this is the famous Delta glass rinser. It's obviously marketed for bar use, but we also think it'd be really amazing for baby bottles and <laughs> new and old moms. Um, tons of storage, as you can see, there is an integrated LED light strip in all of the shelving here, which turned out absolutely beautifully. Brass gallery rail. Is this on the lacquer? I think it's just brush. Yeah, I think it's just like an aged brass, mm -hmm. but it, it looks really good with the unlacquered, but this one's not gonna patina over time, so it's gonna hold this color. Yeah. I just can't, I just feel like it's such a beautiful display moment. And I also like that it's not overrun with booze. Like we do, we love booze, right? And like, we want a bar moment, but we don't, this is a family home. We don't need it to be like so insane that it actually looks like a bar. Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's just the right touch and it just 100% makes me want to come over here and entertain and make a cocktail for my friends and family. Um, sit at this beautiful dining table. This spot turned out so, so lovely as well. And this is a good demonstration of the scale of furniture yeah. and how important it is to make sure that you are scaling your furniture properly. The room looks big. I think it's because it's like more of a square layout, but that doesn't really give us a lot of length for the dining table. So it is a kind of a smaller dining table. You can still fit eight, but it was it fits perfectly in the room, but we really couldn't go much bigger. Yeah, I think I think so too. And, and we tried, like we tried to max it out, but um, so don't be afraid, like don't be so committed to, oh, I need a 96 inch table. This is not a 96 inch table. Um, because you think you should, or because so-and-so says you should, really embrace the space, what it will give you, and, and go from there. These chairs are also available at the Life Soco, and they are oh, so beautiful and amazing. This space was probably the ugliest. <laughs> Wasn't it? Right I know, yeah. I know. Why well, sugarcoat it yeah. now? Um, it was so ugly and so weird. It was just these angles, you guys. I can't explain like how, yeah. and not even angles, it was like round, just so much round yeah. curvature. Round ceiling in the entry, then there was like a round one like behind. It was like a mini round, yeah. it was like a baby, like a mama round and a baby round. And then this whole like half round window thing. So again, we just had to clean it up. Huge columns right here that bye bye with like in the big wrecking ball. That's literally like kind of how they took them down. Um, so we opened it all up, did a new front door with beautiful glass that would let light through. So now there's light coming again at every single angle. Um, so while we got rid of angles, we tried to fill those angles with just light coming through. Um, beautiful entry table right when you enter, you walk through. I don't even really remember what this looked like. It was a sunken in That's right. and there was carpet, there was a fireplace. So we actually took the fireplace out and put it in the primary bedroom, which we'll show you. But she really wanted this space to be like a conversational area. This is where she's gonna host her book club. So we wanted to make it feel like really organic and cozy. So this is not like a typical furniture layout we usually mm -hmm. do. Yeah. Um, we did like mix match, mix match chairs, the sofa. A lot of accents. Mm -hmm, a lot of accent pieces, but I, I just love the flow of it. It just feels like really cozy. And not for Formal. Yeah, we didn't want the, uh, these clients are not formal, so they didn't want this traditionally formal floor plan to feel stuffy and to feel like yeah. you couldn't sit in here and to be a waste of square footage. So I just feel like it feels so exactly so comfortable, so welcoming because it's right off of the entry. It obviously needs to needs to have some power to it, but the furniture placement just turned out so beautiful. Um, and cleaning up the sight line, I think also, and the the ceiling lines in here, they worked out so well. Yep. And Again, we were like, this is this was one of those in fields where we came when during demo, yeah. and we're like, okay, we need to take this one up, this one yeah. down. Um, the project manager was really great in this in this project also in in helping us kind of identify where we needed to clean up and and where we could stay. We're giving the primary entry wing, if you will, a moment. First time I've said moment this whole video, by the way. Um, won't be the last. I'm doing well. I know. <laughs> Because it's not the first time. Oh shoot! Oh, like, 
Kelly's like, no, bitch, <laughs> you said it before. Okay, back to the primary. So it's off of the um, entry, like main entry and that formal living space we just showed you. Mm -hmm. And before this was the baby rotunda. So there was the entry rotunda and then the mama rotunda and then the baby rotunda. So weird. And there's a piano. Yeah, yeah. there's a huge piano in it. It was like super wide. Mm -hmm. We're gonna walk backwards, come with us this way. We added this arch, beautiful moment. Mm -hmm. We also united all of the hallways with these overhead pendants, which how many did there end up being? Five, five six, six something seven. like that? Yeah. So now both sides of the floor plan, if you will, have these beautiful pendants overhead that are just kind of guiding you and leading you through the house, mm -hmm. which is such a special way to give a hallway more personality, right? Yeah. They get like really long in large floor plans yeah. and they need to look pretty and feel good. So we created this vestibule, if you will, um, mirror situation, say hi to Nick. <laughs> Oh, we can't, we can't hide you in this one, so we just decided to come out with it. Um, okay, talk to us about, you handle this. Talk to us about this amazing Well, I feel like door. I need to start, don't look yet, oh, with the door closed, because the yet. doors are so just so pretty. Look at these. These are solid wood, white oak, arch doors, the stain, we nailed the stain, so it gives that, it looks like a natural wood still. Um, and we did that. And it looks like it's oh. been there for like ever. Yeah. Brand new. Doesn't look new. Okay, go. Very Euro. We actually, we didn't talk about the hardware yet, but we did unlacquered brass hardware throughout the house too, which again, love that she was on board for the unlacquered brass. But okay, now I'll take you into the bedroom. Oh. Magic. Now we're on the other side of the door. <laughs> okay, primary, obviously. You guys, this is not old. This is new. This mm -hmm. whole wall, the wall, the fireplace placement, the fireplace box. There was no fireplace in here before. This was another freaking weird, crazy room. I think this wall was angled because on the other side was the mini rotunda and yes. the piano. So it was rounded angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, this room was like an octagon before. Now it's like, what's the seven angle? <laughs> yeah. It's like that. So we do have one square corner now, but. Oh, yeah, and was... and before you couldn't even put there was not enough length on the main and only wall for the bed to have a bed and two nightstands even small nightstands so they had one nightstand and like a it was yeah. like no good so yeah so um, created a front of the room and interestingly the front of the room in this space is not the TV which is exactly what we like to see mm -hmm. in primary spaces so um, tell us about is this Tuscany cream. It is Tuscany, Tuscany cream, and we did like a heavy mortar wash with it, so it feels like it's been here for ages, very Euro. Um, and then we did a real hand-hewn beam. I just, I just can't believe it. And thank you to our client. I know we say this all the time, but this is obviously not a necessity, right? Like we could have very easily gotten scared and been like, oh, that's a lot of stone. It was a big number. Um, yay, thank you for not cutting yeah. it. Because, she was all about it, yeah. It is, it just oh, it transforms the space so much. It, it gives it all of the vibes that this space needed, yeah. right? And like just so much personality. I can only imagine them laying here, like opening a book. It's just so relaxing. Fireplace, yeah. yeah. Okay, so coming into the space, um, this rug is vintage, so I'm sorry, they will, I know I told you I'd give you all the links all the sources, but um, it's vintage, so I don't have a link for that. Um, but we we will of course share anything in the furnishings that we can. Um, scale of the headboard, I think this is a good thing to talk yeah. about. In a space like this, especially in a, a space that isn't a perfect square, you can see we have obviously this wall, there's a beam overhead here, we've got three different access points. The bed needed to do some talking. If it was a low profile bed, I don't think it would have captivated the space like we, yeah. like we needed it to. So this is, I think, I think it's, it's like 80, 80 yeah. yeah, I was gonna say 80 or 84, so huge bed, nice and calm, very tranquil um, ceiling fixture that also does a lot of talking. I think this is a good opportunity too to show you um, how tailored a TV can look when it doesn't have a dresser or case piece under it. It can still be really warm and pretty. So we ran the panels. Yep. Mm -hmm. behind the bracket mm -hmm. yeah which we again we weren't really sure how that was going to work out yeah but it looks so I, it beautiful. turned out beautiful and then we we did like a little corner bracket so we have the curtain panels that cover the door as well i just i love so this room yeah. like where are we like i yeah. i was feeling like mission like sonoma yeah. um Winery. santa fe napa and then kel was like i feel like we're in like a french chateau I'm like oh yeah. take me these side tables we actually made the client if you remember in the kitchen we had the marble backsplash 
So we had to buy a full slab for that, but we didn't need a full slab. So the client was asking what are other ways we can utilize that slab because we don't want to waste a beautiful marble slab. So now I can add furniture designer to my resume. Yeah, yeah. I drew these and our fabricator was able to make them and- Wait, what resume? Oh, I don't have one. You better not have a resume. No. <laughs> it's already updated now. Yeah. Uh, I'm just kidding. So our fabricator made these. We wanted them to be layered. So one's a little bit taller, a little bit smaller, but I feel like it just adds, we didn't want like a big furniture piece in front of the stone, beautiful wall. So it just adds a little layer. And it, wor it worked out so beautiful. I didn't even know RJ was doing this. And I literally walked in yesterday. and was like, oh my gosh, that looks just like the kitchen slab. And she's like, yeah, it is. We drew, I drew furniture so that we could utilize the slab behind beautiful white oak arch door number two is the primary bathroom. How many more times are we gonna say, ugh, if you could see the before space? But this one was, is like, wow. This was the ugliest, come yeah. on now. Yeah, this was, was bad. God, it was blue walls. Like duck egg blue. Yeah. Like cornice boxes everywhere, uh -huh. valances everywhere. Yeah, like columns. Framing the yeah. tub. Huge stained glass window. Just like dated huge stained yeah. glass window. It was just the opposite of vibes. Mm -hmm. It was like sad. <laughs> sad and there was shit everywhere. Yeah. Um, this wall was actually angled too. Yeah, and you walked into a Juliet door, which we traditionally like, but like it wasn't giving anything for the space. There was zero symmetry. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, it was so weird. We'll show you some, some pictures, but um, I feel like when we first got into this space, even you and I were like, oof that bathroom's gonna be a yeah. doozy. How the heck are we gonna do that? Because it also, okay, so another challenge in renovation, the square footage was here. Like we didn't make the bathroom any bigger than it already was. And it also had a huge shared his and hers closet. So in an under roof remodel or renovation, like what do we do with the space? So I think we spent more of our time, like we figured out how to square this off to give vanities. Yeah. We figured out how to square off the, um, the closet, kept the water closet where it was, didn't need to add another water closet for these clients, having his and hers wasn't important. Mm -hmm. um, but so it was really like, what do we do with the shower and the tub in such a huge, space already. Yeah. And I do think we kind of needed to see it demoed a little bit to like finalize because it was it was just a lot. Yeah. And there were weird angles. So we ended up swapping out some windows, got rid of the stained glass window, got rid of the, there was block mm -hmm. in the shower. I'm thinking yeah. back. The shower is kind of like, you couldn't really see it. It was like tucked back there. I think there was like a side wall. So we got rid of all that. And now you have this glass wall so you can actually see the shower because it's pretty now. So in the shower on the top half, we did a Zalige tile, which is a natural handmade clay tile, adds so much texture. It's all over Europe, very European feel. On the bottom half, we wanted to give like a concrete look to tie into the concrete tub. So we went with a porcelain tile and a 48 by 48. So there's minimal seams, added a ledge around, and then we went with unlacquered brass in here to tie into the unlacquered brass throughout the rest of the house. You know, we love a primary bath vanity moment. This one is so perfect. Not huge, not oversized. We went with a white oak. Um, actually, I think this is Rift. Um, white oak with a reeded detail, which I absolutely love. Again, unlacquered brass in here. I feel like you can really see the living finish of the unlacquered in these faucets. Um, it's going to get better over time. That patina is what we want. I'm warning you now, if you don't want your faucets to change <laughs> color, finish, look, see water spots, do not do unlacquered brass or unlacquered of any kind. Living finish is what they call it. Stay far, far away from that. You want a finish that is sealed. We, however, are thrilled that this client wanted a living finish because it's just gonna get better. So it's gonna give you again that really super Euro look. Um, another way to really step up your finishes if you're going for that more traditional aged European look is in your countertop fabrication. This is the same quartz countertop that we used in the kitchen. It's called Sereno Gold, it's by Vidara. I have it at my own personal home. I absolutely love it. I think it's the best countertop in the world. I hope they never get rid of it. Undermounted sinks, countertop has a single OG edge, a one and a half to two inch band here, and then a dome. So this is actually a three piece kind of fabrication that's all laminated together so that it gives you this, this kind of height. It looks so freaking good. I'm so obsessed with it. Um, before I walk you over to the concrete tub, the flooring, this is, I'm going to let you play a game. What do you think it is? YouTube. Is it limestone? Is it slate? Is it travertine or is it porcelain? So you have four choices. What did I say? Limestone, slate, travertine, or porcelain. I'll give you a minute. <laughs> 
No, I'm kidding. Okay, um, it is porcelain, you guys, and it looks so much like real limestone. We are shooketh that this is a porcelain product. So you can see it has tumbled edges. We went with a quarter inch grout joint, which I think also helps the age of it. It has so much natural variation. This is like completely unheard of in a tile. Um, and I've just like sold you on this and now I'm trying to decide if I actually wanna give away the spec because <laughs> RJ, RJ is shaking her head in the back because we just got this and like we hunted, you guys, we waited 10 years for this kind of tile spec. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna give it away. Every I know, we might need to use it a little bit more. So this time I'm not gonna tell you, but I just gave you a whole bunch of keywords. If you wanna do the hard work and Google it and try to find it, you go right ahead. But uh, we have to keep th some things just special for us. Don't worry, we'll get sick of it at some point um, and probably just give it away like candy. But it's porcelain. Um, I can't even remember who the supplier is, so honestly, that's why I can't tell you, but we're so freaking happy with it. And we're more happy for our clients. So I'm thrilled that she got something so great. So, okay, last in this space. Concrete tub. I mean, what do I have to say other than it's another incredible concrete tub. You've seen them in our work before. I am obsessed with it. It's it, There's just like no amount of giving that a tub can do more than a concrete tub. Paired with this incredible floor mounted fixture in the back, it just screams like age and luxe and sophistication and ugh, all the things. I can just imagine this like overflowing with bubbles. The panels behind is also something really unique that we love to add when we can behind a bathtub, so don't be afraid of that. Unless you're like splashing all over the place and getting water everywhere, um, you can absolutely have panels that go to the floor and not be worried about that. So um, I'm really sorry about the tile. <laughs> I feel really bad. If you guys are looking for this project on Instagram or TikTok, the hashtag is Modern Mission Reno. This was such a good one. Such a good one. Like the before and after, like sometimes we forget to really like look at the space while we're in the middle of renovation, but before and after are just next level. I, it's it's shocking. Yeah. Like I feel like as designers, we tend to gravitate toward new builds because it's new and mm -hmm. we, you know, sky's the limit. We're on a renovation, you're somewhat restrained and constricted with what the house will give, but mm -hmm. this one, mm, it gives me faith again in renovation and yes. how impactful the changes can be. So the contractor is Modern Splendor Homes and the architect that assisted with the structural components is Four Line Studio Byron. Thank you so much for working with these two amateurs <laughs> um, in terms of the architecture world and for doing us a favor on this one. It turned out so incredible. I truly just like, I, I one of my favorites. Yeah. One, I always say that. One but. of my favorites. I'm so lucky to have you on my team. Oh, thank thank you, you so much for being the incredible lead designer and talent that you are. Um, we hope to hear from you all in the comments while you're here. Make sure you like and subscribe and we will catch you on the next one.